The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Tuesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets in positive territory. S&Ps right now up by 15 points, trading at 44.67. Coming up to the highs, we had basically 24 hours ago. We had a little bit of volatility to the downside yesterday. You're talking about yesterday. Basically, market right where we were when that sell-off began at about 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You traded from 44.65 down about 50 points to 44.15. We almost got it all back, though, by about 5 p.m. Eastern Time. You see the acceleration even into the close last night. Markets in positive territory. NASDAQ 100, volatility as well. We're sitting at 14,394 this morning. Right now, pretty similar area when you talk about where we were. The market let yesterday trades from 14,400 down about 200 points. You accelerate into the close almost right back to that same area. And interesting, the NASDAQ 100 did it basically twice yesterday. Sells off on the open. Gets back to even by 11.15 p.m. Eastern Time, and it does it all again in the afternoon session. Dow up 165 points this morning at 34,601. That's about half a percent. You got the Russell up about a third of a percent, 2,070. Crude holding relatively well in terms of 110 right now. Makes it to 113 last night. You talk about an acceleration. I'm going to put it on a 10-day chart, so a 30-minute chart going back 10 days. Think about it. Crude's up $17, folks, in the last, just in a week. You get a pullback, you get a pop off that pullback. Volatility in spades, but pretty remarkable the bullish run it's gotten since you just pulled back to last Tuesday at 93 bucks. Crude comfortable at 110 right now. Political, geopolitical tensions still very elevated, obviously. Gold contract down about three bucks this morning at 1926. You back it up to last week. You were trading at 1895, the lows of Wednesday. And we check out notes and bonds. Man, this one is just remarkable. Talking to my dad yesterday. I'm saying, man, the movie yesterday in notes and bonds. Remarkable. It just does not stop, folks. Uh, had a great weekend, my birthday weekend this weekend. I appreciate my man Basil Chapman covering for me yesterday. Uh, Larry Pesavento filling in for my dad yesterday afternoon. Uh, my dad will be back live this afternoon at 3 o'clock, both back in the saddle this morning. Uh, tenure. We're talking about a yield right now, folks, of 2.36%. 2.36, you have the 10-year rising about 7 tenths percent over a period of, I think, a couple weeks. Was it two weeks? I mean, I think that's a, this goes back 10 days. Let's check it back 20 days. So that is correlating to where we were on March 4th. Uh, it is the 22nd. So, yes, you're talking about 18 days, two, two and a half weeks. You had yields up here at a price level, okay, that correlated to a yield of a 1.6 handle, folks. We're at a 2.3 handle. Uh, the Fed has come with the hikes and the market, no matter what it did in terms of a sell-off, risk-off, I should say. That's when you saw the yields drop back down below 1.7 briefly. It was supreme risk-off as the war began. But the market said, you know what? No matter what is going on with the war, Yields are going up. You put this thing on a daily. I was looking at it this morning. Pretty remarkable that you're actually slamming through the channel that this has been in since August. So we have a seven-month trend where you started at 135.14. We've seen lower price and higher yield over that entire time. I'm going to give you the three-year weekly real quick to show that that's not even the COVID highs, okay, when you had yields getting crushed to what were they, like half a percent or something like that when we were dealing with the COVID lows, okay? So this trend I'm talking about is just since August, does not even incorporate the highs that we had back in 2020 that correlated to the lower yields number. I believe this was just coming off yields of, what was it, 1.5% around here or something like that. Nonetheless, you can see we are accelerating remarkable. That's a three-year weekly. Let's back it up to a five-year weekly. Tell you what, let's just put it on the monthly 
to show everything there. Uh, where we are right now, I mean, it seems all but natural. We'll probably head into 117.15, at least in the short term. That is the low from October of 2018. But look at that bar. You can barely find any bars. I mean, we had some craziest going on in 2008, folks, but I don't have a bar. I mean, what's this one? That's uh, November of 2016, the election of Trump. Just, uh, you know, huge events taking place to get this kind of action in the 10 year and we have a liftoff six seven hikes this year that's the plan inflation out of control cpi number at eight percent i was watching um bullard uh st louis fed president bullard on uh bloomberg this morning earlier and he is a hawk but it being a hawk is pretty reasonable right now, folks. You know, when he's saying, listen, these geopolitical tensions are going to persist. This is probably going to go on for a while. Uh, even if war is over, tensions will be there for an extended period of time. And we can't wait. We have the CPI number coming in at near 8%. And he, he also said, yes, we'll be data driven. Okay. But we almost don't have to wait for the data because... He just laid out the case, right? CPI is at eight percent. He kind of said, "Of course, anything could happen," and that's the mentality that I would take, folks, and I would encourage you to maybe take. As in, of course, anything could happen, right? All of a sudden, everything could shift overnight. Consumers be could become hyper aware of inflation and stop buying products if they go up, forcing companies to not be able to raise prices as easily as they have been, allowing for inflation to accelerate. I mean, you see the earnings reports. We're gonna get into some earnings companies this morning. They talk about that they have been able to raise prices and not see an impact of demand. You even have stores like the dollar store going up uh, to, what is it, like $1.25 or something, dollar fifty. you know, staggering increases, saying demand is not impacted. That needs to change. It couldn't change overnight. The odds of that happening, very slim. Therefore, they need to raise. They need to keep raising, and we'll see what happens. Uh, but the market catching quite a bounce, even with yields rising so dramatically from 1.6 handle to basically almost pushing 2.4%. Quite a rise indeed. We back things up to the market. Uh, you talk about maybe parabolic, folks. That's your S&P. OK, we saw what the market looked like on the 10 year. Scary stuff when you put the S&P on a long term monthly chart and basically see that we've had one pullback barely. And that is the covid pullback since 2008. And even that pullback is dwarfed from the run up we've had since then. And yes, the acceleration we just had, you could call that a potential uh, second pullback, but on a Fibonacci level basis, folks. You're only talking about a price level that barely touched the 236. A 382 would have got us down to about 3,800. I believe on the NASDAQ 100, we did get down into that area. Let me delete this shorter term time frame one. So 3,800, completely in the realm. If things go awry again, you have the NASDAQ 100 touched that area of about 13,000. We've now bounced a bit to 14,386. Quite the bounce indeed, but you look at this chart, right? Longer term. We're kind of still in that pullback area, have not shown too much dramatic strength, even taking a look at the S&P on a monthly basis. Yeah, we've bounced to reclaim some of the losses of February, but you still got the month of January out there that was a tough one for the market, to say the least. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back with our man Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Network. We got some earnings going on, of course, today. Uh, we'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures up 12 points right now. You get the NASDAQ 100 barely holding on to the gains. We're up by about nine points right now, trading at 14,340. You get the Dow up 154 points right now. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every morning, folks, or every afternoon, 12 noon Eastern time, Kevin Hinks, Tom White on the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market, breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups, folks, trade management, talking defined risk, talking options. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, pretty interesting day yesterday in the market as Jerome Powell came out with what I thought was his most hawkish comments uh, in, in quite a while. Tommy, and what happened next was pretty um, expected. You know, you saw bonds and notes sell off hard. You saw uh, the percentages of a 50 basis point move by the Fed. Those percentages go from about 9% to over 50%. So he did say, if necessary, they would do that. He was speaking, member to the National Association of Business Economics, and he was pretty hawkish. You know, he, we will take the necessary steps to ensure a return to price stability. And if we conclude that it is more appropriate to move, we will. He was very firm. And what I think was he took the rally the last four days and decided I'm going to use a little bit of my monetary capital to make sure that the, tr the, the Wall Street community understands that we may have to move faster than I thought. And so if the next Fed meeting, if they do have to move 50 basis points in terms of interest rates, it will be well um, prescribed. It will be very transparent. And you're already seeing that in some of the Fed speakers that are out there. So Jerome Powell, I think, kind of set the table for if he needs to move on interest rates quicker, that, that he can do that, Tommy. Yeah, I guess if you have to break the news to the market that the cost of capital is going up, maybe you do it after the market goes up for four days in a row, right? Uh, interesting to see how it's going to play out, man. The data, uh, I've never been more interested in the data, Kevin, even myself, uh, especially when we're talking about inflation data right now. And I think it's so cool how, you know, obviously anything can happen here. Everybody was so far off last year from the expectations that I'm just so interested to see where we go this year on the expectations because 
of course there's a possibility that things could either be more so on the inflation side or less so on the inflation side with the number of variables, supply chain issues, etc. cetera. Uh, Nike out with their numbers. They navigated things pretty well, man. They're up six bucks this morning uh, from 130 to 136, but we've seen the companies that haven't. And really the ability of these, these companies to raise prices, I don't know how the Fed's going to get control of that one because it seems like they're pretty easily able to raise prices almost 10 percent and consumers don't have much choice and man that's that's a new thing in my lifetime for sure uh we of course have the story with the yields kevin i tell you 2.35 percent i think this morning uh we do have some numbers out this morning geopolitical tensions of course persisting beyond the yield story what are you watching on this market on the horizon as we approach the end of the first quarter right now yeah it's a little thin right we're we had nike uh, yesterday, that pretty much signals we're at the we're in the autumn of earnings season. Let's put it that way. So it's late. So we'll get some names. Like today, we're going to look at Adobe. We're going to look at Yum Brands. That's kind of important with everything going on right now in China. And then we're going to look at Square or Block uh, in, in the third segment. So we still got some good names to look at. We've still got some good earnings this week. Just not as many as normal, Tommy. We're going to have to, um, you know go through them and be a little more uh you know, you know we, we've got some good names but as you know this time of the month this time of the quarter it's just not as many of them so what give us a little teaser kevin because square and, and, and paypal i've looked at both of these equities man quite the pullback in this sector both pretty strong companies in my opinion but man you deal with some of these multiples they get a little crazy square you go from 289 less than a year ago we were just under 100 bucks and now you're trading at 135 and paypal boy from 310 back to under 100 uh before pre-covid levels which is remarkable what's your give us a little teaser of uh square or even just how that whole sector with paypal man talk about a pullback on those equities well good or bad tommy right paypal and square have linked themselves to cryptos so when crypto goes from 69,000 to 42,000, uh, you, you're going to see some effect in those. Now, are these companies terrible companies doing a bad job? No, they're not. They're changing the way we pay for things. And with Venmo and Cash App, they're changing the way we, we move money around. But valuations came down. And I think the biggest mistake that people can make is... In, in this environment is interest rates going up, you got to sell all the growth stocks, right? Well, some you probably do, and some of the valuations have to come down, but that doesn't mean these companies aren't still extremely high-quality companies with the opportunities to make money. So uh, we're going to look at these and cover them, and you know, I, I, I believe that companies like PayPal and Square, they're not going anywhere. They're here to stay. They do amazing things not only in payment, but in, you know, uh, brick and mortar hardware payment like Square does. Square has unbelievable tools for small businesses. So there's a lot going on here. We're going to discuss all of it today, Tammy. I love it, man. That's a perfect answer. I'm going to be watching for sure because what I found myself digesting even my own thought as I was trying to ask you your take on things is what I was probably saying is, am I crazy for looking at these equities, Kevin, when they fall from 289 to 100 and saying maybe they're attractive, man, because I, I felt like I missed some of that run, you know, on two great companies because I agree, man. I use Venmo all the time. Um, yes. It seems like even that's I only do, a Tommy, and I'm 100. And I <laughs> Maybe not quite, but but I agree, man. It's a great service. Once you do it, Kevin, um, I needed a check the other day and I couldn't find my checkbook, man, because couldn't you know I should have a checkbook, but couldn't find it because things have become so easy with some of these companies. And crypto is probably here to stay as well, um, even if it's going to be pretty volatile for the foreseeable future. Kevin, we appreciate the time, the conversation, the education as always, man. And we'll be watching at 12 noon today. Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. You too, man. Thanks, Kevin. Folks, tune in every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time. Outstanding program. Uh, they're going to be talking Adobe, too. That's another one um, that I have been checking out, folks. Get back to 453. I mean, you're trading at prices that you were trading at 
in June or July of 2020 on Adobe shares. Quite the acceleration, quite the pullback uh, with many market participants. S&Ps right now, we're negative, uh, excuse me, negative, positive by 15 points, jumping over to Nike, as we mentioned. So Nike up to 137.68. They spiked to 139 last night on their numbers. Uh, Nike shares, they beat on earnings, they beat on revenue. Let's jump over to the headline that we had here in terms of the stocks that are making moves. Nike at the top of it, 87 cents a share, 16 cents above revenue beat, increase in digital sales. Uh, even before COVID, Nike was one of the first companies, one of the big time companies that was really doing a great job of having their own digital sales. And that was part of the reason they got such an acceleration, uh, success, successfully navigated supply chain issues. Uh, some other companies, if Nike's doing well, that's going to benefit Foot Locker as well. It was interesting, though. Last time Foot Locker came out with their numbers. So Foot Locker, ooh, look at that. Barely up. We're talking about up 1% right now. Market's up almost half a percent. But Foot Locker, there's your drop off on their earnings, basically saying they're selling less Nikes, probably. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open, and you got the S&P right now up by 16 points, trading at 44.68. Again, the highs yesterday, 44.73. You look where we are, though. We're basically in the ballpark of the highs yesterday. You take out that one tail 
on the open yesterday. We're chopping around about 4470 all morning. Be interesting to see where the market goes uh, or if it just chops around for a bit. As Kevin said, uh, we're on a little bit of a hiatus. We're almost so used to so much news coming at us right now. It's going to come again. I mean, we're coming towards the end of March, right? We're going to do it all again. We're going to get jobs data. We're going to get CPI data, CPI data for the month of March. CPI data, <clears throat> excuse me, headline number, expect it to be, and again, to cite our man Kevin Hinks, I think he said video game numbers at one point. Folks, we're dealing with inflationary tendencies that are already near 8%. And you're going to have gas prices spiking dramatically from where they were in February. I believe you had gas prices up 6.6% for the month of February, which contributed about a third of the 8%, we'll call it, round number of CPI. At the time that CPI came out, gas prices were up 20% already for the month of March. If gas prices were up 6.6% in February and they contributed one-third of the rise to CPI, what's the number going to do? Now... The Fed is going to take that for what it's worth. You're going to see the core number out there that takes out food and energy. The Fed probably going to pay a little bit more attention to that if they think that oil prices could abate in the future. But, man, there's a lot of volatility and unknowns. And we just had the S&P jump just above where we were yesterday. We're right at that 4470 price point. So, yeah, a little bit of a lull in earnings right now. Now, Kevin, uh, as Kevin said, Adobe, they're after their bell today. We take a look at Adobe. Another great stock, but talk about a pullback, man. You're down from about 700 bucks. Just misses that round number. My man Basil Chapman up next with the Tiger Technician's Hour. This is a long-term weekly chart. We're back to 455 from about 700. We came into COVID. COVID at about 380 so you're up about 20 percent since where we were prior to covid take a look at the market man you came into covid at about 3300 you're up 1100 points markets up about 30 percent from that period of time now adobe shares dramatically higher to that 700 price point we've basically given it all back there's your parabola, folks, from 450 to 700, back to 450. We had quite a little consolidation here. Adobe, maybe it's found a little bit of a bid. Uh, if I'm making this trade on Adobe, and I don't have any equity trades on it right now, but it was on something I'm looking at with earnings tonight, it's always nice when you're trading in an area where you have support, right? Many times, look how often Adobe found some support from where you were in August of 2020. You're talking about in October, we found a bounce, almost got back to that area in January of 2021, dipped slightly below that area to start off 21 as well in March. And then, yeah, we come right back down to that area. But you had a consolidation between four and 500, excuse me, between 450 and 500 on Adobe shares, basically from August all the way through to the end of May of last year. I mean, that's a pretty decent nine month consolidation. And you were right back to that area again now. What I will say is that if the market sells off again, because the market's just caught quite a bounce, which is part of the reason Adobe's caught quite a bounce. But again, coming into that area, at least you can have a trading plan that you have your back against the wall. Because if Adobe trades lower than this, I mean, you're probably going back to 384 in terms of the highs that we came into COVID on that area. Didn't quite make it down previously. You have a low in March of 420. And we got last week, uh, 407 was the lows. The highs pre-COVID, 386 for Adobe. You jump over to the Analyze tab, 30 bucks is what the market has priced in right now for their earnings after the bell tonight. You want exposure for the whole week? You're talking about $33 of implied volatility for a $450 stock for Adobe after the bell today. Uh, what else we get? in terms of earnings since we're on it? I think we got General Mills, not many as Kevin said. Uh, General Mills, let's see. Yes, they are. No, let's come on. Oh, we catching up. There we go. General Mills. Yes, they are. General Mills is going to be out Wednesday before the mail, before the open, not before the bill. Uh, they're pricing in about a 5% move, $3.50 move, $62 stock. They're out with their numbers Wednesday before the market. Checking out General Mills. Quite the pullback uh, in March there. I believe is that is that having to do with cereal and the cost of wheat i believe hadn't even looked at this but that, that's how quick everything's reverberating uh yeah as we all know wheat watch out and what else we have i think we got darden thursday after the close along with some others but those are the ones that stick out now there's your chart of darden interesting just kind of back to where you were prior to COVID. we chop around above those levels for an extended period of time back on a daily chart for some shorter term context 
Sells off in March. We pop a bit from 116 to 132. Now we jump over to the Analyze tab. Yeah, so they are out with their numbers. Yes, it is. Thursday after the close, you're talking about an $11.40 move right now for Darden. For $132 stock, that makes a little, that makes sense, 9%. They're going to have some volatility when you think about restaurants, et cetera. Uh, staff, cost of food, cost of wages, and all of that. All right, we got the markets popping a bit. Jumping back to the S&P, you're up 24 points right now, 44.76. You're talking about a NASDAQ up 64 right now. We jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Let's kick it off with Amazon. Amazon shares, look at that acceleration, man. Let's put this back on a little bit of a longer term time frame. Excuse me, if you're thinking you missed the run on Amazon, folks, you didn't. Because you'd be getting into prices right now that Amazon was trading at almost two years ago. How can you miss the run on Amazon? And this is where mentality, and I'm not saying to buy Amazon, okay? But I'm trying to attune you to the mentality that I do own Amazon in a retirement account. When it gets down to this lower level of 2,900, 2,800 or so, I think that's a nice area that you could build partial positions for a longer term position in Amazon. It is now basically in the middle of this consolidation area. The upper boundary is about 3,500, lower boundary is about 3,000. You're sitting at 3,260. Longer term time frame, folks, if this is like, you know, the beginning of the next leg up on Amazon, because remember, Amazon accelerated higher right at the beginning, but it's lagged dramatically. The market had a stunning year in 2021. And you barely had Amazon positive, I think, for the calendar year 2021. Underperformed dramatically because of the acceleration it had, but you're trading at 3258, up another nine tenths percent. And yeah, I would keep that on your radar. And when you look at things in the shorter term time frame, like this chart, okay? Yes, I'm not sure I'd be buying today at 3251, okay? When we were just trading 400 some dollars lower. When is that? eight days ago, let alone March 8th. So you're talking about two weeks ago exactly. Folks, Amazon was $600, we'll call it lower, which is a 20 something percent pop, 21 or 22 percent. This equity just rose, Amazon, over the period of two weeks. So yes, I wouldn't potentially be adding right now, looking for some pullbacks, but keep that one, man, on your radar. If you're looking for Amazon, it's still right in this consolidation. And my expectation is whenever it breaks out of this thing, it's going to break out to the upside because Amazon's got a lot going for it. Uh, and we'll leave it at that. That's my take. Could be wrong. But man, I like that consolidation. And if you're ever talking about a trading range that you trade from basically, call it even 1800, we'll call it 2000 for simple math, up to a price of 3200 give or take maybe 3400 you're talking about 12 or 1400 points dollars you make that next leg up you're talking about 4200 or 4400 not out of the realm at all when amazon's already got a high of 3700 made eight months ago folks markets accelerating higher s p's up 29 we'll be right back are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P is now up 30 points. Back to a 15-minute chart. That was the daily, but you talk about a pop on the open right now. You open at 44.67. Markets jump about 15 points in the S&Ps. You get the NASDAQ 100. You jump from a price point of just under 14,400. You're now positive by a th uh, three quarters percent, excuse me, in the NASDAQ 100. Dow up three quarters percent as well. We jump over to Nike shares up about 5.4%. Uh, after their numbers last night, trading at 137. Now, Nike's had quite the pullback here, folks. You look at the move from a price level of 60 bucks to the COVID lows to almost 180. Highs made as recently as November, man. Uh, tough to imagine that Nike gives up a third of its value from November 1st to basically March 1st, all right? Not really. I guess we'll call it four months. No, November, December, January, February. Yeah, four months, four and a half months at a max. Nike gives up a third of their value. And then since then, we catch a pop. You're up 5.5% right now, as Kevin had put it. You know, some good companies, man, really selling off on huge value. You got Square. They're up 3.2% this morning. Some volatility. They're going to be covering Square. Uh, now, Square, are they out with their numbers? They sure are. So Square catching a pop. No, they're not. No, that was a load. So they're just catching a pop with growth stocks, I guess. Let's jump over to PayPal. Maybe this is rising yields for the payment processors. Uh, let's jump over to some of the banks, man. JP Morgan up 2.2%. Three-year weekly, you dive down to below 130. We're back to 142. You look at it, though. I mean, JP Morgan is trading almost below anything that this tra equity traded at last year outside of the first month of the year, practically, for JP Morgan at a time when we got yields pushing 2.4%, folks. I mean, think about it. You had JP Morgan chopping around the 160s all of last year. And now we get yields rising to 2.4%. And meanwhile, you're sitting at 142. At least worth a look, some of those banks on a longer term basis, because if inflation persists, uh, I imagine they may be able to get those costs under control. Recession, recessionary worries, of course, always uh, with the banks. But I don't imagine that's where we're coming from, folks. I really don't. The market might be a little bit freaked out about higher yields, and I, I understand why. When you're so used to free money, the thought of paying for it can be a little scary. But that doesn't mean that the market is going to turn into some dramatic recession. You may see some slowdowns, but I just don't see it in terms of the economy. As fortunate, we went away this weekend uh, just to a hotel nearby for my birthday. It's nice to be out and about again. I'll say that and leave it at that. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. And that's going to be with the economy for a while, folks. And that sentiment alone okay is a strong one man locking people up for a couple of years and you know i say locking up i lock myself up out of safety for me and my family folks okay but just that in itself okay is 
is going to provide years of want to get out and about. That's my take, but I imagine many people are in similar situations. All right, let's jump down the line to some of the stocks that are moving, some of the equities that I had up with their earnings, uh, excuse me, with just headlines. Alibaba, I want to get into. Now, let's get into, uh, so they have a $25 billion buyback. How about that one, folks? Um, I believe I had an article up here, right? Let's see. Yeah, that's a tough one, of course. There we go. So Alibaba upscale buyback may be a sign of things to come. That's how Bloomberg puts it. $25 billion, Tencent and I, I, Xiaomi, Aomi, uh, also making more repurchases. So we'll check in on Baba in a second. But they soared about 11% in Hong Kong Tuesday on optimism that more Chinese tech giants will follow suit. Let's talk about just Padding the balance sheet, man, giving back, not really padding the balance sheet, I guess taking from the balance sheet and giving to investors is a better way to say it. Likely that those two companies are going to start pot share buybacks post results given their past practice. That's an analyst out there. Uh, though buybacks are common practice among U.S. firms and have a significantly positive impact on the S&P 500 from within a decade, Chinese companies aren't known for making sizable repurchases. So this is why it's having such an impact this morning. Alibaba's program is the largest in the region. It's still dwarfed by those of Apple, uh, Meta, and Microsoft. Expanded their repurchase programs by 90 billion bucks last year. Has been buying back more than 20 billion dollars worth of stock in each of its recent quarters. Here's what I'll say about that, folks. China. They're all about building things out. Share buybacks are just dividends. They've shown they don't do anything for growth. Now, some of these companies, they can't handle the amount of cash they have. I understand it. But it's always tough when these companies say they can barely survive and buybacks are at record levels, right? Can't afford any more taxes, buybacks at record levels, et cetera. Meanwhile, in China, um, up until the crackdown recently, the reason why they didn't persist is probably because China didn't want them just giving that money back. They wanted them growing, expanding, et cetera. I mean, we're seeing it right now. Some of the capital expenditures, it's just not happening, folks. They're not using the money for capital expenditures. That's always the argument, right? Uh, companies save, they can spend the money on CapEx that'll provide future growth. Yes, it's happening to some degree. Amazon's doing it, man. Walmart needs to catch up with Amazon, but in general, buybacks, record levels, as the market's at record levels. Uh, Alibaba and Tencent, huge cash piles. Now, they're talking about cash and cash equivalents as the latest quarterly filing, 293.1 billion won. What does that translate to in dollars? Nonetheless, we'll jump over to the Chinese stocks, and maybe that's maybe that's that's the bid. Here's what I'll say, though, okay? Here's the chart of Baba. That's quite a pop. It's quite a pop off the low of $73, but could you spot the downward channel in this chart even if I did not have the lines on it? I imagine you could, okay? You're bouncing well within the downtrend channel. Now, these lines may be not exactly parallel. Maybe this outlier event here towards the end of 2020 pushes this down a bit. Uh, it's not, not a science, folks, but nonetheless, the trend is downward and the trend has not been broken yet, even with Alibaba. Now, think about this. Even with Alibaba trading up $40 off the lows, okay, which is more than a 50% bounce off of the lows, you are still within the downtrend channel. Percentages on small numbers can be deceiving. Yes, you've bounced dramatically. You've only bounced back to where it was trading at a month ago, which was at $113 down from $319. So keep that one in mind. We jump over to JD.com. Now, they had quite a week last week as well. You traded from 40 bucks last Tuesday to 69 Let's put it back even on a year daily. You were as low as $41 on March 14th. Uh, but again, you put this thing on a weekly. I mean, yeah, that's a bounce, maybe off an exacerbated low. But I'm not sure that you're going higher, folks. All that is is one big bar recapitulating off a second bar. This is a weekly bar. All you're back to is prices you were trading at in the March 7th week of JD.com. All right, let's jump around to some of the other stocks this morning and see how they're trading. We'll jump to Tesla shares, catching a bid, up three quarters percent to 928. Uh, Tesla, over the last 20 days, you were at 691 about a month ago. You were at about 750 as recently as almost a week ago, eight days ago, last Monday. Last Tuesday, you were trading at 760. Tesla, quite the acceleration. Now, you want to see a little, just to keep in mind, folks, you'd always be thinking about it. I mean, Larry talks about it all the time, right? You focus on what you can lose, and you keep that one in the forefront. 
not that what you make will take care of itself, but it makes things a lot easier, okay? Now, like Tesla, you're in Tesla, you just had this run over the last week from 7, 750 to from 940, you better be ready for a downdraft to 870. That's 50 bucks, 56 bucks lower, but all that is is a 382. Market volatility in spades. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up 26 points right now. NASDAQ 100, you pull back a bit from the spike high we got. We're still up about 70 points, half a percent right now. Dow up 8 tenths percent. We check back to Nike. Uh, volatility persisting up 5.7 percent. We check in on the VIX this morning. You're down again, 23.15. Still pretty elevated levels when you think about the market pullback uh, and then the acceleration. Over the last week or so, you've pushed from 33 to 23, but the market's still not comfortable getting under the 20s, understandably so, with the volatility that is persistent. Persisting, I should say. Um, jumping over back to Amazon, so continuing to talk about that, some great points, man, talking about uh, maybe Rivian, right? Now, here's what I'll say, you know, in terms of Rivian and Amazon. Uh, Rivian, up 4% today. There's some volatility for you. Up to 180 originally. I would be careful of buying Rivian because 
putting your eggs in the basket thinking that Amazon is going to prop this company up. I think what Amazon's doing is they are diversifying themselves to make sure that they never get left behind, that whoever is producing dramatic electric vehicles in the future, that they have that foothold because that's where the future is. Okay, It's going to be automated, self-driving electric vehicles, folks. Okay, Now, the article that I'll pull up here, okay, which, which should be buyer beware, is this type of headline and this one comes from january it was kind of the beginning of some of the fall of rivian uh fell 15 percent in two days hitting a new low which is probably dwarf now let's see where this real quick where rivian was we better wrap this up quick man uh in january so this article was written when rivian was trading at about 92 dollars. it's trading at 45 right now okay they're going to buy electric vans from their rival, Stellantis. Yeah, they're just diversifying themselves, folks, in a big way. Stellantis, formerly known as Fiat Chrysler, first announced the deal to sell its electric Ram Pro Master vans to Amazon starting in 2023. Yeah, so Amazon, a uh, great company, would not be relying on any company that relies solely on Amazon because Amazon's in one business for themselves, folks. Uh, that's the bottom line there. Thanks so much for tuning in. Feels great to be back, folks. Thanks again to our man, Basil Chapman, for filling in. And stay tuned. Basil's up next, folks, with the Tiger Technician's Hour. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.